So my good buddy uh, Tyler, I am Wildcat, made a video call, it's been too long. I clicked on it and it was a Q&A. I realized, wait a second, when's the last time I've done a Q&A? It also has been quite a long time. So here we are, I asked on Twitter for questions, you gave questions, and I'm here to answer. Here we go, folks. First question, starting spicy from Crispy Concords, what's the worst thing you've ever said in a Black Ops 2 lobby? Now, folks, that's a long time ago. Long time ago, knowing me, it wasn't the N-word, right? A lot of you guys are thinking about that clip in Gun Game. Oh, you so lucky. You so lucky that nigga. It was more than likely an F slur in Call of Duty like 10 years ago. I I'm pretty confident worse things have been said to me than what I've said for sure too. So if that's any consolation, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, whew. Hot, hot, hot start, guys. This question's from Bonsai Bros. Between Larry Fishburger and him again, who is the better dump truck? Tough question, a very expected question from the homoerotic <laughs> group. I would need further examination uh, in DMs, gentlemen, to conclude this. I'm joking. I don't know. I haven't met him in person yet. It would be cool to meet him in person, but not to examine it. What? <sighs> This is getting too gay, I'm moving on. <laughs> what is it like to record and spending time with kids at the same time? Are you talking about my group being a bunch of children? <laughs> no, I think I know what you're alluding to. It's my child, I have a child if you don't know. Uh, a beautiful daughter. I'd say it's actually kind of, it's 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 hard. It's kind of emotionally hard because I'm, I'd am i be recording, right? And I have a very good noise gate. You guys won't really hear what's happening outside the room, but but I do. I do. And if there's a big cry, let's say she falls and it's, I can tell she's hurt. I just want to get out of my office, go over, help her. And that'll probably take 10, 15 minutes. And it took a lot of, believe it or not, self-control to be like, okay, her mom has her. She's going to be fine. Relax. God is with us. We're okay. It took a lot of adjusting. I'm going to be honest, it took a lot of adjusting. It was not easy, but I've gotten much better. And now I'm now I'm more chill. I'm like, oh, she's crying. She's probably fine. <laughs> Legal talks, but what's the most amazing and worst fan interaction you have experienced? <sighs> I'll just say things that I like and dislike. I don't want to talk about certain people. I don't like meeting fans at conventions. Some people will be sweating a lot and their hands can get really sweaty and wet. When I when I grab the hand, I just feel like slime is going through it. I'm like, very nice to meet you. Very nice. That, that, was, that would be the worst kind of moment of interaction. I just don't like it. So I do fist bump a lot if you meet me. It's just an anti-germ thing. It's, it's a good thing I do it because everyone in the house I'm in right now is sick except me. Just saying. The most amazing had to be this young boy. He was a, a, fan, of, uh, a fan of mine, still is. I met him a few years ago. Um, I, I met him through my sister who works for a charity um the cleanup foundation i'll link it in the top of the description if you're interested in donating but she works for that charity it helps give money to families that have sick kids and essentially they had helped this family and this family their their child knew me and they knew charlotte and charlotte knew me so my sister's name is charlotte <laughs> I, hope, I hope that's okay to say she does a great job she connected me with him i got to play video games with him a good few times hang out with him drove to him visit his family uh, i like his parents a lot how are you doing seamus hope you're well but un un unfortunately early this year he did pass away that was the most probably amazing fan that i've i've experienced because he was he was just a joy to be around and that's that's all I gotta say right there. Yeah. So, Podrick's his name. Podrick. I know you're watching from heaven, kid. So, <laughs> you're probably delighted to be in the video. <laughs> Wildcat told me to send this. <laughs> Why? I'm putting this in. It's not a question, but I'm putting it in. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. Send him back like a different South Park character doing the middle finger. <laughs> Let's make this a war. Next time he asks for questions, of course his next q &A. what is the one thing you wish you could change about your channel and why this is going to be kind of a funny one but i know there's someone in the group that's going to highly agree with me take a guess who um time zones i wish everyone on earth lived in the same time zone that, that would help me a lot <laughs> so that, that, that that's my answer <laughs> it's not fun when people are eight hours behind you and you've got to work at 9 10 11 p.m bang out three high power energy recording hours and it's tiring 
starting. So this question comes from Renegade Media Group. How has being a father changed your perspective on life? It changed a lot. I wasted a lot of time before becoming a dad, just sleeping in. I used to think, ah, oh, yeah, this is lovely, I get to sleep in. Now I realize sleeping in is actually a waste of time. <laughs> it's actually a waste of time. I don't need to sleep 10, 11, 12 hours. I waste a lot less time. I have a lot more value for time. My relationship with God increased a lot because I had this little person and a family and I want all of us to be happy forever because there was moments where, you know, I'm with them and I'm like, you know what? If this, if this was my life, for the rest of my life, it'd be great. I would like it to last longer than that. So <laughs> I know a guy. Oh God, yeah, you, you promise eternal life? Get me in, my family in. I love you forever. <laughs> so if that's selfish, I don't care. That Those would be the biggest changes, biggest changes right there. This is from Odin. He asked, Nogla, how much money did you spend on a Minecraft server? Now, guys, it's the $100,000 Minecraft server that he's probably talking about here that would have been a hundred thousand dollars if we kept playing on it we kind of didn't plan it much we had a lot more plans and different things but people's uh, commitment and not, not pointing any fingers was not there and the interest waned and yeah basically it just like <sighs> like that kind of like that if i was to guess um, i don't know 10 15 000? 20 maybe but it isn't as big as an l as the cow so <laughs> it's still the biggest l on my cv right now next up we got bullet knight he asks what got you into christianity for me i was raised baptist uh love y'all and god bless it was my mom she's she's pretty awesome Shout out to mom. <laughs> she had a really uh, good, strong faith in Catholicism and um, didn't push it, but always invited us as a, uh, as a family to be involved. So yeah, I would say my mom, my dad had a, a, has a very quiet kind of faith. My mom would be more outspoken about her faith. That's about it. That's about it. I'd have to credit my parents and yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> No opinion, no opinion, none. This is from Ape the Great. I mean no offense. After watching your guys' content again after a year, I still notice the same puns and jokes slash forced comedy. I don't know if it's forced. I wouldn't say that, no. You know, I, I, but we'll, move, we'll continue. It's the reason I stopped watching in the first place. Are you guys conscious about the amount of times you use the same jokes? Look, if it's funny, it's funny, number one. But number two, I kind of agree. I kind of agree. When you put the same people together playing similar games, you're going to have a lot of similar jokes. I wouldn't say all of them are the same. I think we've definitely adapted uh, over the years in our humor. It's not drastically different that it's not us anymore, but it's just, uh, you know, evolution, guys. Ooh, Christian using that word. My goodness. <laughs> Joking. Greg asks, and this is kind of cool, cool question. What's the inspiration behind your avatar? looks the way it does if we go check out nogla not shop all right guys you can see my character right here the ceramic mug the talking plush the eye popper it was limited in stock and once they're gone they're gone forever and i probably will not do much march ever again so where's the og so this is like an updated version there's a super old og version this right here this right here is the image folks basically i'm trolling in call of duty there's a guy obviously really angry on the screen saying god damn it and I'm, I've got a radio, we can listen to music. So what I used to do, but when you used to be able to do this, you, you could trap people in corners. It was on dome, actually, it was on dome. <laughs> I remember the map. And I st sat down there and he was getting really angry and I just asked him, do you want to buy a radio? I'll let you out once you buy a radio. And this is in the middle of a Call of Duty match. <laughs> So, so I created this whole series, it's called No Glare Noise, so a fan of it drew this and it spawned pretty much the No Glare profile picture. But here's the intro, enjoy some sweet old nostalgia, and if you guys want me to do this again, I probably can. People probably don't know me that well anymore. You wanna buy a radio, Ollie? Hi, my name is Jim, and I'm here to help. Stop shooting! So oh my god, this kid is gonna get it. Get her, let me <laughs> get her. Oh, He's gonna get it. Like <laughs> British accent. He's just being annoying, stupid Irish dick yeah? here. Go. Ah! Go, Scott and play. <laughs> I know what you are. You're one of these dickheads who because for YouTube, I've seen you before. You're like, no better who because for YouTube, you fucking prick. <laughs> That's right. 
It's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should be quiet. Listen to your mother, spider. Well, don't tell me to listen to my mother, you fucking try. You ain't got no one to tell me to fucking be quiet. No, you should listen to your mother. <laughs> That's great, his mom. Oh, there's another bump here. Okay, sorry guys, sorry guys. I'm just. I really hope this is a boring and this is interesting. I goes Ben. We did behind it. us. No, <gasps> You see in the top right there, guys, the lost soldier I started playing called Black Ops 2. That's the guy who got me into YouTube. <laughs> Someone's probably asked that question. Consider it answered. This guy right here, the lost soldier. Dude, if you're still around, let's get some games. <laughs> if you manage to see this video somehow. So sincere rage. Yeah, I was pissing people off before Wildcat guys. I will quit <laughs> fucking playing right now. If you fucking blow me up. I need some help over here. Oh. Oh, what the fuck? I didn't fuck? think it would hit. <laughs> you fucking. Believe it or not, he's not my first victim. <laughs> Let's get back to the questions. Gosh, we've barely done any. <laughs> C-Man with the, is there anything that you regret not doing, like a brand deal you missed, or collaboration, or just anything else you regret doing? I only regret the calendars. <laughs> That's it. That's actually the only thing. I also regret not starting the Nogland Terrorizer channel sooner. It's been a lot of fun, and it's been, uh, it's been a banger of a channel so far. That's it. iPhone asks, in a world of negativity, how do you find light in the darkness? The Bible. Who would have guessed? Who the guess, guys? No clue would say the Bible. It, I really love the book of Proverbs, the book of Psalms. All, all of those have really, really great advice and help and truth that you can apply to your life that makes your life better. That makes your life better. And better is light. Better being what is good. Stuart asks, what would you say is your greatest memory that you created with the group? P.S. Love you, my dude. Oh, well, thank you, Stuart. Thank you. I would, you know, that Halloween party we had, I think it was a year ago, Walker did a vlog on it. That was fun. I, I, that was a really fun group, group thing. I wish we did more, more of that. People have a lot going on, teach their own kind of a thing. One day, I hope the group does more IRL stuff together. That's what I've always felt like would be the next big step for us is to just once a month or once every few months or whoever can do whatever, uh, we just join up in LA for... I don't know, a few days, a handful of days, have a bunch of fun, vlog, record funny, stupid videos, you know, prepare everything in advance, and then upload them. And that'd be great. I think a Vanos crew channel would be sick. But, you know, everyone else uh, might not see the same. And, you, yeah, that's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Mr. Weeb, do you ever plan to have a drunk gaming session with Evan again? Um, I did a GTA drunk with Evan. It it was fun, but I vomited my guts after never doing it again. Moozy asks, has your taste in music evolved during the past few years, maybe decade? It actually has evolved a lot. Um, I used to really like music with lyrics that fit with my mood or whatever and all this stuff. Now I like music with no lyrics. Just peaceful, chill, relaxing, zero lyrics music. That's it. That's it. That would be the biggest shift, <laughs> which is a much harder thing to do than you think. Try and only listen to music with no lyrics. <laughs> Robert, with a great question. How are Joe and Tony? They're doing great. They're with my brother in Ireland. He's the primary care taker of them. And when I'm in Ireland, I'm more than happy to mind them every day, all day. But my brother really loves them. And since I've traveled a lot, they've got more attached to him than they've gotten attached to me. So <laughs> it's kind of more my brother's dogs now. But they, they love me. Every time I come back, they freak out. And they, they, it's like I never left. So I love John Tony, John Tony. Uh, those, those Joe vlogs were amazing. Please go check those out. <laughs> the Joe vlogs. Distant Voice asks, will you ever make more covers with your sweet and sultry voice? The answer is yes. When that is, I don't know. Hopefully next year I have a idea, an idea. But I, I, I early stages don't want to share too much. Okay, keeping the cards close to my chest. Tegan asking, favorite game at the moment? Tend to tend to play games mainly for recording, but a recent game that I played um, not for recording and beat it is Pikmin 4. 
That was a blast. Just tickled my brain in the right way. That's it, Pikmin 4. Yusef asks if you could give any advice to someone trying to become a YouTuber, what would you say? I would say, are you prepared to fail? Because you're gonna fail a lot before you get any success. You will fail a lot more times than you will be successful, but you only need to be successful once to be considered a success. What do you hate most out of the both the Phallus crew and the Smitty Plus crew? My goodness, so many things. <laughs> Gosh, where do I start? So let me let me just talk about that big puffer guy. That guy in Mary Party is a. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I would say that I wish they played more board games like Risk and Monopoly and things like that and Carcassonne. I just wish I wish they played more board games. I think board games are fun. <laughs> It's kind of the big thing I'm into right now. Rob asks, best food to be eating while streaming? Very interesting question. I've never thought of this before. Um, as you guys know, I'm trying to exercise and get healthy and eat healthy. I have to hit 200 grams of protein a day, folks, in a calorie deficit. That's not easy. <laughs> okay, not easy, not easy. I'm working out like five days a week when I record. You might find me eating because of that reason. To not disturb others, because I've done a lot of that, eat something that isn't very crunchy, so it doesn't come across on the mic. And something that isn't greasy, so it doesn't go on your mouse or, or, or keyboard. That would be it. That would be the best food. Whatever that fits into is, is, is the correct answer. <laughs> Austin asks, out of all your friends, which one has given you the best advice? I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I don't think I've gotten much advice from the guys. Uh, Brian? Brian is a good guy to go to and give advice if you have a problem. He's pretty sincere and he gen genuinely wants to help. Um, Louis early on in my career was definitely super helpful. I'd ask him, is this good? Is that good? And I'd listen to him a lot because he, he had already reached the level of success that I, I wanted. And I was like, well, he must know something I don't. So I listened to Louis a lot very, very early on in my career when it came to videos. So I would say Louis and Brian, what was your favorite date with Scary Spice? My fiance, Aaliyah. My Twitter handle is Scary Spice. My favorite date, oof, it's the most memorable one, where we went to a French restaurant and there was a fish that had still had their eyes in the fish head and she ate the fish eyes. Damn, this, this, this woman's crazy. <laughs> but, I, but I appreciate it because I didn't want to eat them. You know, like when the food's in front of me, I obviously want to eat it and I don't like leaving it especially in a restaurant, because they're so expensive restaurants these days, man. I don't know what it is. I, I want to obviously eat everything. And I didn't want to eat the eyes. And they told us the eyes are edible and totally fine. I was like, can you eat my eyes? <laughs> she had them. So she had all the fish eyes. So um, that is definitely the most memorable date moment <laughs> for me, because it just shocked me. I was like, damn, all right, well, this is this is interesting. She'll probably go through a lot for me. She probably... <laughs> If, if she'll eat fish eyes if i you know favorite 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 Ooh. Gosh, I, we went to universal recently that was really fun i always love going to universal with Aaliyah. it's just a blast it's just a blast that would be probably one of my favorite date nights recently we did like an escape room and i farted in it that was so funny that was so funny because it was this tight room with no ventilation <laughs> and we were already stressing out from not figuring out how to get out. Um, we also, I oh, I also love going um to like the Studio Ghibli movies that have been out recently in the AMC. They, uh, they they've been having them going on. I'm really excited for Howl's Moving Castle. So I love those movies. They feel so relaxing and chill. Oh, Lewis asks. How was it having to share a birthday with your triplet siblings? <laughs> That's such a funny question. I remember one birthday, we all got a bike. I remember that. That was that was kind of like, you feel a little less special because it's like, oh my gosh, a bike for me. Oh, and you got a bike. And you got a bike. <laughs> it's human nature. But one thing that definitely you wouldn't expect uh, was a problem is Christmas presents. Your parents were really the ones putting the gifts down. And uh, basically it was a race to wake up first uh, because one year uh, my brother looked at all our toys and there was different piles separated well, separated nicely. He's a little child now, he's a little child. And 
he looked around and he just thought to, he looked at his pile and thought you know I think that could be a little bit better and I think it would be it could be a little bit better so he went into different piles and he swapped things out right to be fair he didn't completely steal he swapped things out so that's what it's like and uh one Christmas I was like um my presents seem a little shit ma'am what's going on here Andrew seems to have a little bit better presence. Santa was kind of unfair. Uh, what's going on here? And then my mother brought me to the store because she realized what my brother had probably done. And I got to pick up one thing. I was so happy. I was like, yay. <laughs> and it was a Neo Geo game, I believe. A Neo Geo game. You guys know Neo Geo Pocket? Who Jig Bigly. Is this big Jiggly Panda's like alt account Jig Bigly? Any advice on being a dad? My girlfriend is pregnant. Right. Push true, man. Push true. There's going to be moments that you feel like you hit a wall out of stress or out of worry or whatever it may be. Push true. Push true, man. That's the only... And, and um, you just have to break past your limits. You'll reach your limit and you have to break past it. And the only way you do that is with love. And if you're driven by fear, it won't go well. If you're driven by love, it'll be very successful. Parenting definitely exposes the best and worst things about you and tests you as a human. But if you can be humble and really work on yourself and see that you're like, see that you're the person that needs, needs uh, to improve and not focus on how other people need to improve, do that with love and you'll be amazing and you'll do great and you'll appreciate it and you'll have some lovely moments that you'll be forever grateful for and wish they'd never end and you'll definitely be very, very, very thankful to God. I'm speaking for myself and I hope you can say the same thing one day. <laughs> Dylan asked, would you rather make a video that was the most enjoyable to make ever but made no money? Or make a video that was the least enjoyable to make, but make lots of money. <laughs> uh, there was there, there was some sessions I recorded with the guys. I, it, it was not fun, and they made money. So <laughs> the second one has definitely happened, and the first one. They both happened. I don't really rate my enjoyment factor a, a lot in recordings. I I factor how in entertaining everything has been on an overall like big picture lens so if, if i didn't have fun but i uploaded a video and people loved it i'd be like okay well great that's one person who didn't have fun but lots that did that's a net positive you know but if i made a really enjoyable video for me to make and nobody liked it i'm like well it's still a net positive but not nearly as close <laughs> So probably, to be honest, the second one. For that reason, the second one, Dylan. And it's not because I love money, but money is definitely helpful. Salke, I'm going to pronounce it that, asks, who do you relate to most in the Bible? Thanks for all you do. I relate most to the, to the sinners, to be honest. I relate to the sinners more than the saints. It's easier to be one of the sinners in the Bible than it is to be one of the saints in there. I really love the story of... Um, Peter who denied Jesus three times and he was still the person that Jesus built his church on called the rock so I, I love this uh, I love the story of you know Jesus transforming people who are sinners and who he knows will reject him and hurt him and cause problems and just <laughs> overall just not be good people from time to time he'll stay patient uh, the gospel reading today is Talking about Jesus' inexhaustible patience for us. And uh, he definitely has that. So but that's it. That's it. That, that's what I relate to. That process of up and down. It's very human and realistic and honest to life. Jenny asks, which junk food is the best? Ooh, that's a great question. Right now, my go-to is just an In-N-Out burger. I'm trying to be like healthier. So In-N-Out burger doesn't seem that unhealthy. But if, if I just don't care about myself that day... I'm ha I'll have McDonald's, the classic. Um, I love um, double cheeseburgers and McFlurries. <laughs> Jaser asks, what is your deepest, darkest secret that's tearing your soul apart? <laughs> Let me think. Let me think. The fear of not reaching my true potential. 
<laughs> is that is that dark and deep and secretive? Who related to that, huh? <laughs> but I look, I, I put my trust in God. That's that's how I overcome that. I have my faith and trust in God, and it's His plan, not pl my plan. And it's day by day, step by step. Gaptastic dream vacation destination. Oh my gosh, this is going to be such a weeb answer, but Japan. I watched anime for like a decade now, and I would just love to visit Japan. It's definitely on the bucket list one day. Um, I'll go. Uh, I think there's a Nintendo Land over there. It's just cool things. Like RT Game went to Japan recently, and he was posting about it. I, I was like, whoa. Dominique asks, would you ever invite your wife to a Vanos session? If yes, what game would that be? You know what I would prefer? I would actually prefer the women of the Vanos crew to play together. So like, um, obviously Aaliyah. Lene, Marcel has a girlfriend, Scotty has a wife, Tyler has a fiance, Moo has a wife. Like, it would be so funny. I think that would be awesome. I would love that. That would be, honestly, I, 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 don't, I don't want to like bash the group, but I think the Vanus crew women could be more entertaining than the men. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> and believe it or not, interesting and entertaining men usually end up with interesting and entertaining women. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think it would be fantastic. If you're listening, Vanos Crew Women, all right? If you guys make like a channel called Vanos Crew Women and just play like once a week together a few games and throw that up, guaranteed banger videos, tons of views, and you won't need your men any. I'm joking. No, not that last part. <laughs> not that last part. Sam asks, who's your favorite YouTuber outside of your normal group? I actually do watch YouTube content. I genuinely enjoy it. So I kind of have a decent idea of like the sphere on YouTube and uh, the creators that are there. A lot of gaming content is very kid friendly and kid oriented, especially on the trending tab. But obviously that wouldn't really be what I'm interested in. However, I really like a guy named Summoning Salt. Really love his videos. Uh, Wendigoon is obviously great, but a little scary and spooky. So I have to be in a certain mood for that. <laughs> and then number three, I like this guy named Josh Strife. Plays. He did like a Chrono, a chrono Trigger uh, video that was absolutely epic. So his videos are super cool too. Those are the videos I'm into right now and the creators I like. Grandpa asks, what are the highs and lows of what you do? Well, Grandpa, the highs would be like seeing a 1 out of 10 on YouTube. 1 out of 10 means it's the best performing video you've had out of the last 10 videos. The lows would be when I see a 10 out of 10. <laughs> so that would be the highs and lows. Woo, literally, literally highs and lows. <laughs> Loaf of Goose asks, how does it feel? That most of the Vanus Crew fan base thinks you're the funniest member. Question mark. Sometimes you carry a video. I don't really try to be funny. <laughs> I just, I think that's the key. Just don't try. I don't know how funny I am. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm asking a biased audience right here, but do you agree? <laughs> Comment down below. If you agree on this Nogla channel with Nogla asking, is Nogla the funniest? Go on. There's no wrong answer. I don't know. I don't know. I, I do appreciate that these patches put me in S tier. Have to put in S tier. There you go. Fucking loves them. Yes. That's why I react with you, buddy. That's why I react with you. <laughs> so guys, that's it. There's been 900 replies. I'm sorry if I didn't get to you, but I hope I still answered your question during this video. I will probably do these once a month because I genuinely enjoy them. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate it. I read comments. So if you do comment, good chance I see it. With all that being said, folks, I hope you enjoy it.